in some of my previous videos, I go over some of the biggest mistakes that DIYers don't really know that they're making when installing receptacles, and I also show how they should be properly installed. Well, I can tell you in a lot of those videos, I get a ton of comments saying you installed that receptacle upside down. And I can tell you, it does not matter if I install it like this, or if I install it like this, where the ground prong is up, someone is gonna say that it was installed upside down. Well, in this video, we're gonna put all of that to rest. We're gonna go over the code, see what is allowed, what is not allowed. We're also gonna look at the manufacturers, see what they recommend. And then we're also gonna go over each one of the use cases, whether the ground prong is down, or the ground is up. And then from all of that, we're gonna talk about which ways might be the proper way, depending on the situation. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so really quickly, before we dive into this too much, let's just really explain the different parts of this so we can totally understand what we're talking about a little bit later. So of course, this is your standard receptacle, or a lot of people will just refer to these as outlets. And for most of you in a residential setting, a lot of times you're seeing them like this. But for the sake of this video, you have three holes here on the face of this receptacle receptacle here. This vertical hole that's over here, if you compare it to this one, this one is a little bit smaller. The smaller vertical hole is going to be for your hot or your line side. This is what's going to be supplying the power into whatever it is that you're plugging into this. This bigger vertical hole over here, this is the neutral side. This is what then completes the circuit. And then the hole that is the basis for this video is this circular one that is down here at the bottom. And this is for the ground prong. But now let's go to the standard for where a lot of people go to in order to find out whether or not a certain device should be wired up or installed in a particular way. And that would be going to the National Electrical Code. So when we take a look at the National Electrical Code, you can go through the entire book. You can look at receptacle orientation because there is a specific place for that. And when you go to that section or any other section for that matter, when it comes to residential applications and which way this receptacle should be installed, whether the ground prong should be down like this, or whether it should be up like it is here, if you go throughout the entire NEC, there is no code whatsoever that talks about how this is supposed to be installed, whether it should be down or up. That being said, there is one section in the NEC that when it comes to receptacle orientation in specific places, there is one orientation that is called out by code and would be deemed as illegal. And that comes down to NEC article 406.5 subsection G, which is for receptacle orientation, and it lists out some of the scenarios where a receptacle cannot be facing a specific direction. One of the big ones here though, is this one right here, which is number two, which is under sinks, where it says receptacles shall not be installed in a face up position in the area below a sink. So again, basically what the NEC is saying here is they're not saying that the receptacle can't be ground pronged down like this on a wall or up. What they're saying is in those particular scenarios like under a sink or on countertops, especially places that get wet, they cannot be in a face up position and that's because they don't want the case of water to be able to go down inside of that receptacle. So again, you can go throughout the code book, but this is basically the only place where you can find where they actually talk about a receptacle orientation and how it should or should not be. So the NEC doesn't really have anything that can settle this electrifying argument, but let's go to the individual receptacle manufacturers and see what they have to say, because if they have specific directions or orientations, then the NEC does say you need to follow those directions in order for it to fall in line with code. So let's go see what some of the biggest manufacturers have to say about which direction these should be installed. All right, so as you can see here, I've got a lineup of some of the most common receptacles and brands. And if we take a look at this one here, this particular one is a resident grade receptacle that is made by Eaton. Now, tons and tons of you are gonna see this installed in your home, but if you look at it this way, it's kind of making it look as though it is upside down when we have our receptacle in this particular orientation. Okay, well, this is the front. Let's flip it over here to the back. There's a lot of wording on this. Now, some of it's sideways, so it wouldn't matter, but there are actually some instructions that are engraved in this plastic right here and some specifications and information up here as well, 
that are upside down with this receptacle being like this. But now let's pick up this Levitin residential grade receptacle and see what it says. So if we look at the face of this Levitin receptacle, if you can see what is engraved in the plastic there in the middle, you will see that it says 15 amp, 125 volts and it's right side up. We're able to read what it says with the orientation of the receptacle being like this. Well, now let's flip it over here to the back and see what the back says. Well, over here on the back, again, we have writing that's going sideways, so that's not really telling us anything. But then up here at the top, we have some directions again. You can see that in this orientation, the words are legible. They are right side up. We can read them just like this. They aren't upside down. And down here at the bottom on the yoke, it actually says Levitin. And again, it's not upside down. But now let's get into the GFCI receptacles. This is a Levitin. This is an Eaton. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the Eaton first since we've seen that both of them are upside down. So if we take a look at this GFCI receptacle, we have some words here on the front. Now a lot of them are going sideways again, not up and down. But if we look here on the test and reset buttons, you can clearly see where they have test. It's upside down there, but it's right side up on the bottom. And then again with reset, same thing, upside down on top but right side up here on the bottom. And so of course, if we were to flip this upside down, we'd have the same thing, but just reverse to where we have each word in both directions. Then if we flip it over here to the back, this is where it lists where all of the wires are supposed to go. And as you can see over here on the back with the ground prong in the down position, all of our words are upside down. But let's take a look over here at the Levitin now. So same thing again with the Levitin. We actually have, this is a weather resistant receptacle, the WR with the ground prong being down, the WR is right side up. The test and reset buttons are the same as the Eaton where we have those words in both directions. You have reset and test both upside down and right side up. If we flip this one over to the back side, you can see with the ground prong still down, that all of our words now are right side up. They aren't upside down like they were with the Eaton. So this could be really, really confusing, but if you then go to the manufacturer and look at their websites, or we can get this new box here, take the receptacle out. Now this is an Eaton brand. And on the inside of their boxes are their instructions for how to install the receptacles. So we can really quickly glance over this together. There is nothing in their instructions that designate which way this receptacle, the orientation that this is supposed to be installed, whether the ground prong should be up or the ground prong should be down. I would think that if this was designed and it was important for this to be installed a specific way or orientation with the ground prong, that it would be denoted in their instructions and it just isn't. So between the installation instructions and the lack of guidance as to orientation, there is none at all, to the GFCIs having the words in both directions for important things for people to be able to read, which is to know which one is the test and reset buttons on the GFCI, I would say that again, along with the NEC, the manufacturers are not taking a stance on this either. So I would say that there's really no information out there from anyone that is designating the proper orientation of the ground prong. And since the NEC doesn't declare it, and since the manufacturers don't declare it, because again, the NEC defaults to the manufacturer's instructions as to whether or not something is installed properly into code, that is just telling me it doesn't matter. You can install this with the ground prong down, you can install this with the ground prong up, and unless you have a local code in your local jurisdiction, then there is nothing out there that says it should be up or the ground prong should be down. But in my opinion, that is actually a good thing because that doesn't mean that there aren't scenarios where installing it with the ground prong down isn't better or installing it with the ground prong up isn't better. And we're gonna take a look at that now. Look at some of these situations where maybe one or the other is better to do when it comes to installing it in your home and where. So now let's get into some scenarios and take a look at ground prong down and ground prong up and the arguments for each. So let's start with the argument for the ground prong up like this. Well, the argument for this is when this is installed in a wall and then you go and install your plug with the ground prong up here on top. So I'll show you plugging that in. So we've got that plugged in now. 
Well, one of the big arguments for this is that, for instance, if the plug was to be pulled or it's just barely being pulled out like so, well, the argument for this is in the event that a paper clip or this is a nail, for instance, or some sort of utensil was to fall from above and fall down onto that wire just perfectly, which I will say this would be incredibly, incredibly rare to happen but let's just say that it did. The argument is that that metal object would then hit the ground prong on the way down and then fall off. Whereas when you have the ground prong down, and again, say your plug was pulled out a little bit, somebody tripped over it, and you have something metal fall down on it then, well, instead of there just being that one prong, you actually have two to where if this fell again, just perfectly onto those prongs, Theoretically, it could sit on them just like that. It's connecting between the line side and the neutral, and more than likely, you're gonna see an arc flash, you're gonna have a short circuit, and it's no longer gonna work, and you might possibly have a fire. So again, that is the number one reason why people will argue you wanna have ground prong up so that in the event of this happening, you don't have an issue such as what I just explained. Something else I also wanna note that kinda goes against the ground prong up and it being able to protect shorts from happening is in residential applications, unless you're using an appliance, or in this case, I have a shop vac plugged into this, a larger appliance is using more amperage. Most of the time they don't have ground prongs anyways in your home. Most of the items that you are plugging in your house are just two prong plugs like this. There is no ground prong. So whether or not this is installed ground prong up or ground prong down, it doesn't make any difference on these particular plugs because no matter whether it's ground prong down like this and say it's pulled out just a little ways or it's ground prong up like this, you still have the same scenario to where if something falls from above, lands on there, you're still gonna get that short circuit. So the protection that comes from that ground prong being there in a ground prong up scenario, really is not common in your household application anyways. But let's get into some other cases where having ground prong down can also be an advantage. Now, another pro to having ground prong down comes to accidental contact. So when you go to unplug your devices, a lot of times you're grabbing them like so. You're putting your pointer finger down below the plug and putting your thumb up on top and then you're wiggling it or just pulling it straight out and away. Well, your thumb is much less likely to go down and touch those prongs that are still energized at this point because they're still somewhat inserted into the outlet, but your pointer finger down here at the bottom, it is not that difficult for your pointer finger to then come off of the plug or just barely roll to where then it is making contact with that ground wire right there. Whereas if this was ground prong up and it was plugged in, and you go to remove the plug from the receptacle and you go to pull it out, well, you're more likely for that pointer finger to get in between the plug and the receptacle and possibly touch one of those hot prongs that are still plugged into the plug as you're removing it. So what is the verdict and what is my opinion on whether or not it should be ground prong down or ground prong up? In my personal opinion, while I do see the possible safety that can come with the ground prong being up and something falling on it if it's partially plugged in, I'm personally still gonna go with ground prong down. I think it looks a lot better. It comes with, in my opinion, a lot more pros that we talked about all throughout this video, especially in a residential setting. So that's why for me personally, I install all of my receptacles with the ground prong down. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Which way have you been installing them? After watching this video, which way are you gonna install them going forward or what's your preference? And I'd also like to know, have you even ever considered all that we talked about in this video before, trying to decide which way they should be installed? If you could, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are between the two different orientations. And again, like always, for your convenience, I'll have links for everything you saw in this video, from the different types of receptacles and the GFCIs. I'll also have links for these newer Leviton receptacles that are super DIY friendly because of these lever connectors that are built into the receptacles themselves. They're a lot like Wagos. 
So it makes the installation very easy and quick to do. So I'll have links for all of it down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check them all out for yourself. Now, really quickly, now that you've seen this video and you kind of get to decide which way is the proper way for you, what's most important is making sure that these are installed and hooked up properly. But not only do these need to be installed properly, but you also will want to make sure that you're installing light switches properly. And there's a lot of mistakes that come with installing those incorrectly as well. So in the past, I've done videos on both of those subjects, receptacles and light switches. I go over all the biggest mistakes that are made that a lot of homeowners and DIYers don't realize that they're making when installing those receptacles and light switches. But I also go over the proper way things should be installed, some better practices to use, and things to look out for in that video to make sure that they are getting installed properly and those connections will last for many, many years. If that would be of interest to you and you'd like to learn more about what those mistakes are and how to fix them, then all you have to do is click on one of these two videos right over here. When you click on whichever one you'd like to watch, it will take you directly to that video. But I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.